An additional actor which plays an important role in the implementation and the enforcement of IHL is the UN. Many UN organs and agencies may be involved in situations of armed conflict and contribute to the alleviation of the suffering of the victims of those conflicts. Consider the impact of diverse UN agencies such as the World Food Programme, the UN Development Programme and the UN Children's Fund, each of which provide assistance to persons affected by armed conflicts. Regarding more specifically the implementation and enforcement of IGEL, it is well known that the UN Security Council may decide upon a variety of measures in case of IHL violations, which are binding if the Security Council decides that the situation amounts to an act of aggression, a breach of the peace, or a threat to the peace, according to, to its general powers under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter. We know by now that the primary function of the UN Security Council is not to sanction violations of international law, but to safeguard the international peace and security. Nevertheless, it is not uncommon for serious violations of ICHEL to be the subject of measures by the Security Council. These measures may be of military nature, for example, the creation of UN peacekeeping of forces with a humanitarian mission. In particular, since 1999, many UN peacekeeping forces are specifically mandated to protect civilians at risk in armed conflict. The UN Security Council Resolution 1296, adopted in 2000, is the first text to insist in general terms on the necessity to include such a protective mission in the UN operations mandates and to emphasize that the deliberate targeting of civilian populations or other protecting persons, and the committing of systematic, flagrant and widespread violations of international humanitarian law and human rights law in situations of armed conflict, may constitute a threat to international peace and security. This is actually a key aspect of a thematic issue that the UN Security Council has dealt with in the years since 1999. The missions authorized on this basis are specifically devoted to the protection of civilians in armed conflict and are therefore mainly based on upholding IHL. It is in this framework that the UN Security Council has adopted not only concrete measures in specific situations, but also general resolutions reaffirming the applicability of Aisha rules to these situations. The UN Security Council is also empowered to adopt non forcible measures. Regarding such measures adopted by the UN Security Council in relation to the implementation and enforcement of Aisha, this was mentioning the requests made to the UN Secretary General to set up commissions charged to inquire serious violations of human rights and IHL. Such commissions have been established in relation to the armed conflicts in former Yugoslavia in 1992, in Rwanda in 1994, in Burundi and in Sudan in 2005. The UN Security Council is not the only UN body empowered to establish such missions. The UN Secretary General itself may initiate fact-finding missions. The Secretary General may designate a special representative or set up a group of experts and send them on the field, as it did in relation, for example, to the attacks on the refugee camp of Jenin in 2002 in the Palestinian territories. Recently, Commission of Inquiry of, or Fact-Finding Missions are increasingly set up by the UN Human Rights Council. Although established by a human rights body and being mandated to investigate about human rights violations, 
they also examine actual violations and make conclusion on such violations. Current examples include the Commission of Inquiry in Burundi and the Intendant International Commission of Inquiry on Syria. 